Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, we have successfully implemented the logic of checking whether we have the permission and if we don't have the permission, how to ask for the permission. We had to repeat this particular logic in multiple methods like modify contact, delete contact and load contacts. If you pay attention to this, you basically have two major chunks of the logic in this that is checking whether you have the permission otherwise write the logic to ask for the permission we have to come up with a better mechanism of writing this code so that it becomes much more easily manageable and reusable can we come up with a generic method which can be invoked in multiple number of places to basically manage the runtime permissions to manage this assume that you have an activity in that particular activity you have major chunks of code where you need to basically ask for the permission and check for the permission. The very first chunk of the code is check whether you have the permission. If you don't have the permission, that is where you have to ask for the permission. To do that, what we will do is we will write a, a generic method. Let us call it as a request for the permission or whatever that you feel more comfortable with and then invoke that method every time you need to ask for the runtime permission. This works well if you have only one single activity. What if you have multiple number of activities? You will observe that method which is basically managing the runtime permissions have to be repeated across multiple activities. There has to be a better way of doing this. To solve this, we will create a, another activity. Let's call it as a base activity which extends activity. And what we will do is the repetitive method that we were forced to write in multiple activities, we will put it in the base activity. Now, when we do that, you can just remove those methods from the multiple activities by extending the base activity class. And my other activities will become a little bit lighter. But because of the basic Java's inheritance concept, all those activities can still utilize those methods. There is another important aspect of what if the user grants the permission and denies the permission. Depending upon that, we have to basically manage flow of the application. For that, Android provides a callback method called as on request permission result callback. And method that is present in that interface is on request permission result. Now the question is, how do you utilize this interface and the method. What we can do is the base activity can implement this particular interface. Other activities which extend my base activity can override the on request permission result. So each activity will override the on request permission result and handle permission grant or denial of the runtime permissions in an appropriate manner which suits its context. So now we will go to the code and try to make sense of what we have understood here. You can now observe that I have a main activity and I have created another class called as base activity. If you go to the base activity, it extends app compact activity. It could have been activity as well and it implements on request permission result callback. It has a method called as request runtime permissions. This is the reusable method that will be invoked everywhere whenever there is a need for the requesting of the permission. I will not get into too many details of internal implementation but you can observe that this chunk of the code is a copy paste of what you had written in the previous video where I am just checking whether I have to show the request rationally otherwise I can directly ask for the permission. If you go back to the main activity, my main activity is invoking the request runtime permissions method which has been defined in the base activity. So I am basically keeping my main activity very very light. You can observe that my main activity doesn't have the request runtime permission but it is actually defined in the base activity and whenever I need I am using that in the main activity. My main activity overrides the on request permission result. It can do so because my base activity implements that particular interface and the method that is there as a part of that particular interface is on request 
permission result. This particular method gets executed when a user responds to the request dialog box, either granting or denying the permission. If you can observe, the parameters are pretty much what you pass when you request for the permission. Assume that if you had passed the my permission request read context, that is what will be received here as the first argument. And if you had passed string array containing permissions, that is what will be received as the second argument. And the third argument is basically an array of integer giving a information about whether a particular corresponding permission was granted or not. If it is minus one, then it is denied. And if it is zero, then the permission is granted. And then inside that particular method, based on what kind of grant results I am getting for a particular permission, I can do an appropriate operation. This is how you handle a callback from the user's response to the request permission dialog box. And that is why now if I launch application sample as contact and add contact, it asks for the permission and then if I allow, it automatically adds the contact and refreshes the text view by invoking the load contact method. In the same way, I can do the remove and I can even do the update contact. Now if I go back to my base activity and check the request runtime permission, the remaining else if is basically managing multiple permissions. Now the question is why would you have to handle multiple permission? Sometimes you need more than one permission to do a single operation. Assume that you want to tag a photo with the geolocation. So in this case, you need two kinds of permissions. One is you need the camera permission to basically capture a photo and then you need a geolocation permission to capture the longitude and latitude when that particular photo was taken. Now to complete this operation, you cannot just be reliant on one of the permissions. You need to have both the permissions, otherwise you won't be able to complete the operation. For example, when I click on that, it should ask for both the permission that is to take the picture, the next one would be location. The user can deny both. In that case, you should not allow the functionality to continue or the user can deny one and may not realize and allow other. Even in that case also, you should not allow the functionality to complete. Until and unless the user allows both the permission, then only you should allow the functionality to be completed. This is a little bit more tricky and needs to be handled a little bit intelligently. I'll be talking about this in a much more detailed manner in the next video. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.